Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be discussing transaction fees. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So transaction fees are a useful tool for understanding when there's a lot of hype coming back into the Cryptoverse. This chart shows the sum USD value of all fees paid to miners, transaction validators, stakers, and or block producers that day. Now, one of the interesting things about it is that you can see that every time that this metric has spiked, it has corresponded to at least a local top, not necessarily a major top that takes years to get past, but it has sometimes. If you look at 2017, you'll see that it, it spiked after the high was in, right? So the high came in on December, uh, you know, 17th or so, and and then um, I believe the wick, and then the transaction fees topped out about five days later. And you can see that, you know, anyone who happened to be using transaction fees to sort of time their, their sell, had they waited for, you know, a huge spike, that would have been worthwhile. Now, hindsight's 2020. It's not like you would have known it was going to go that high. I mean, if you were just looking at this and you saw this spike, you would have all, all the reason to believe that, you know, that 17K or 16K was the top. And I mean, had you sold Bitcoin at 16K in 2017, I don't really think you would have been too upset about that, you know, just six months later. But it does go to show that like, you know, while these, these, on, these metrics can be useful, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be, you know, that day is the day that it actually tops out. And then you also have a spike here just after the high in April of 2021, right? So you can see that there was a spike to around the same level. I mean, not quite as high, but, um, you know, we did get a, a fairly massive spike in, in, in April, April 20th. And the high had come just a few days before that, right? About four or five days before, kind of similar to 2017, in fact. And then what was interesting is, is just a few months ago, we saw a spike. And, and it was interesting because... <laughs> because of um, you know normally we don't see that in in the in the pre having year right but with all the you know with all the uh, activity going on 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 the on the network um, back then you can see that there was actually a spike of transaction fees not to the same level uh, that it went to in in 2017 but it actually did go to the same level a little bit higher than it did in 2021 and I put a video out on it back then and. Um, it, it was a it was a weird video because it's like well you know Bitcoin's only at like 30k and we have you know transaction fee spiking but it's interesting because after that spike occurred you the, the high was actually already in for that little move I mean again now today we're looking at at new yearly highs so it's not like this corresponded to a major top in any way but it did you know it did correspond to at least a local top that lasted for for a few months the reason I bring this up is because you can see that transaction fees are started they started to spike again. Now they're they're still nowhere near uh, at the time of this video, which is being recorded on November twelfth. But by the time you see it, it'll probably be several days later because I'm going out of town and um, I just decided to make a few extra videos to publish while I'm out of town. But you can see that Bitcoin <coughs> hit a high of thirty seven k, thirty seven point four k on the daily. We we went we know it went up closer to thirty eight k and transaction fees did start to go up. Now, over the last you know few days, transaction fees have started to go back down again. And I think one of the reasons is because people are starting to speculate in the altcoin market. We've seen altcoins starting to pop off here and there. But you can also see in, in 2021, there was like an initial spike um, you know, in February, and, and then there was a, a you know, sort of a final spike that occurred two months later. And, and the current level is actually closer to that initial spike than anything else. But I, I think it's worthwhile to watch because if, if transaction fees um, continue to come back down, then it could be uh, it could be symbolic or it could be representative of interest slowly waning again, just like it meant that uh, earlier this year, right? And, and again, when we put out that video on transaction fees, you know, we put it out, but it's not like, you know, anyone was looking at, at 30K necessarily and thinking that, that was a major top, right? I mean, certainly it could have been a local top. It could have been the yearly high, but I don't think anyone was looking at 30K and thinking it would take four years to get back above that level like it meant over here in like um, in, in 2017, right? Um, 
So when you look at it, when you look at it here, you can see that it, it spiked and then it, you know interest just waned again. And and now it's it's basically doing the same thing again, right? Where transaction fees have spiked back up, but you know still not to the level that it was at back in 2023. But it's it, these spikes seem to be coming a, becoming a little bit more regular, right? I mean, you know, we're currently have a spike now in November. We just had a spike in in May, but before that, you know, the spike was all the way back in 2021, and this, you know, the the major spike before that one was in 2017. So it seems like they're starting to become a little bit more regular. So I think it might be worthwhile to keep an eye on transaction fees, um, because. If it if it does continue to go down, then it, it would it would sort of represent that interest is starting to sort of wane um, with Bitcoin, and then people are then you know speculating in alts. The reason why that can be a problem is that you know Bitcoin leads the bull market, and if people get too uh, if they get too focused on the altcoin market, then then you know then Bitcoin can start to show weakness, and then that's where altcoins can drop a lot. So you know the reason why this is useful to look at is because if you want the you know the altcoins move to be more durable then you would not want bitcoin interest to wane so quickly right you would want bitcoin to stay elevated for a longer period of time rather than to to sort of slowly fall back down because when it slowly fell back down in april and in and in july we know that was not a good thing for the altcoin market the altcoin market sold off considerably so Interesting metric to look at, transaction fees at it, 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 local top here on November 9th, and it's been trending down ever since. We'll see what it does, uh, if it can if it can start to go back up or not. And if it doesn't go back up, then you, you start to run the risk of, of coming into a, another, um, another high that we then sort of bleed out from for, you know, for at least a couple of months or so, like we saw earlier in the year. So look at transaction fees, see if it can go back up. And if it can, then it means that interest is still is still there for Bitcoin. And I mean, there is, you know, potentially, um, you know, if you if you follow the channel, we talk about Bitcoin dominance and whatnot. And, and dominance is coming back into that prior that prior high of 52 percent. So there's certainly a chance that that Bitcoin dominance could could bottom out um, sometime over the next couple of weeks and, and start to trend higher again as, as interest then shifts back to Bitcoin. Now, remember. Bitcoin dominance can go up no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. So you could have in, in pre-having years. So you could have an example where Bitcoin dominance goes up, where Bitcoin goes up and rallies. You could have an example where Bitcoin dominance goes up because Bitcoin's dropping. Um, but just just remember that aspect of it. It's 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 more so the reason we talk about Bitcoin dominance is because it tells you that crypto portfolios that have that are, are Bitcoin heavy tend to do pretty well in an environment where Bitcoin dominance is going up because collectively the altcoin market is bleeding back to Bitcoin. But again, you can have one to two month periods where the altcoin market still outperforms Bitcoin, but it doesn't take away from the fact that dominance, excluding stable coins, has been putting in higher lows since May of 2021. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.